Hey there, welcome to NZ Money Karma and welcome to 2024. Hooray, I can't believe it's already 2024. So I'm sitting down today on the 1st of January 2024 to write my family's budget for the year and I thought I would sit down and do it with you guys and I'll show you how I do a zero-based budget for our family of four. Um, at the moment, we're a one-income family. Come the end of the month, we're going to be a two-income family, but we're going to continue to live just on the one income. So not much is going to change on paper. Come along with me and let's get budgeting like bosses this year because if 2023 was crazy, I mean, our bills went up over 30% in 2023. I can only imagine that 2024 is going to be um, even more horrendous for home budgeters. So if you're like me and you want to take control of your family's finances, you've got some big goals or you want to pay off some debt, having a zero-based budget right from day one of 2024 is going to help you get there. So let's get cracking and write this budget. So what I'm going to do to start off with is just I've got a scrap piece of paper, a pen, I've got a calculator here as well. Just going to label it budget 2024. The first thing I do is I go through our bank account and have a look at the areas where we're putting money into. Like what are we putting money into each week? And this is what we're doing. So we have bills. And in our bills we have insurance. We have power and internet, we have gas, we have wood, we heat our house with a fire, and we have miscellaneous, just for something that I can't think of right at the moment. Um, we have rates, and then we have travel, we have a kids account that we put into regularly, we have a house account that we put into for regular maintenance and then that'll give us our total that's in the bank. So once I've got these written down, I go back into the bills section and I go into the I actually go into each one of these providers. So I look I look back on my insurance and I say, okay, how much did insurance cost us in 2023? So the only thing we have insured is our physical house. We don't have contents insurance and we no longer carry life insurance because we feel like we're at a financial point where we're comfortable if one of us passed away, the other would be fine um, to look after the children. And that's mainly because we've paid off our mortgage and we have our traditional retirements funded. So if you don't have those two things done, I would definitely not recommend that you don't carry life insurance. So our insurance for our house this year was $2,153 each. That went up 27%. Now I presume that it's going to go up again next year. So I'm going to add 25%. So I'm doing 2153 times 0.25. And that's, I hope you can see that, 53825. So if I add that, 2153 plus 53825, that brings me to 269125. So that's how much we, I estimate, I don't know if you can see that, sorry. So 269125, that's what I am estimating we'll need in 2024 to pay our insurance. Now because I put money away each week or each pay for these fixed costs that I know we're going to have, then I need to make sure I'm putting that into a weekly amount so I know how much I'm going to need. So I go 2691.25 divided by 52 weeks of the year and that gives me an amount of $52 a week. So I know if I put $52 a week away, I will have enough money to pay our insurance when the time comes. Okay, so the next was power and internet. So I've had to have a little bit of a guesstimate here because we actually didn't pay for our internet at all in 2023. 
I think maybe there was one bill at the very end, and that's because we had a deal where we got free internet for 20 months. We're off that now. So combined, I think we would have spent, had we had to pay for the internet, 1496 for the year. And then I'm going to have to plus the 25%. So that comes to 1,870, and then I'm going to divide that by 52, and that gives me my amount. That's $36 per week. And I'm going to go through and do this for each one of my bills. So feel free to stick around. I'm going to get cracking. Gas was 1,260, so I've gone back into my gas provider and had a look through all the invoices. Times that by 25%, that's 315. Coming back, 1260 so plus 315, 1575. And then divided by 52 is $30 a week. Hope my writing's tidy enough for you. Wood. That hasn't changed actually, so I'm not going to add on 25%. I'm just going to go straight in and divide that by 52, and that's $29 per week. Miscellaneous, I'm just gonna chuck in 200. And I just can't think of what that would be for, but I don't know, I kind of have a feeling like there's something that maybe I'm gonna forget. And then finally is rates. Now our rates are $4,500 a year. So rates in New Zealand, I think you might call them um, council tax in the UK. I don't know what it's called in the States if you're watching there. Um, and the rates go to pay for things like your rubbish bin service, libraries, roads, that kind of thing in your local area. Now these, our rates have just gone up, so they're fixed for three years, so I haven't increased those by 25% either, because they've already increased. Although, word has it that some areas are actually increasing theirs by 50%, so, you know, that could get pretty expensive. So 4,500 divided by 52 is $86 a week. I'll round that to 87, because it's 86.53. So now I'm going to add up what do all these things cost. This is These are the bills that I have to pay. Now let's see where we're at. Oh, so that is $238 a week. It's going to highlight that. So $238 a week for my bills. Our budget for 2024, we're looking at keeping to $1,000 a week. So if I'm going to be spending $1,000 a week, and I've got $238 here already, I'm kind of thinking, okay, I want to keep this to $500, so that I have $500 to cash stuff in my envelopes. So let's just see what that would need to be if I did that. So that's 1,000 minus 500. So that gives me my 500 that I'm using for bank stuff. And then I'm going to say minus 238. So that gives me $262 to stuff into these. Okay, easy peasy. I can do that. So travel is going to get $100 per week. Oops, I should write there. That would be 5,200 per year. Our house is also going to get $100 per week. And that leaves me $62. So I will put $62 per week. Oops, per week into the kids. And if I go 62 times 52, that'll tell me how much it is for the year. So that's 3224 
I do also have a kid's envelope, so it's not all the money for the kids, but that's a good buffer. That pays for things like music lessons and sports fees. There we go. So my total for bills is going to be $500 per week. Easy, right? How does that compare with your budget for the year? So $500, that's what stays in the bank. Let's do this a little bit clearer. Travel, kids, house, and total. So that's the main budget done. That's the money that's going to go automatically into various accounts every week, every pay, to make sure we can meet our obligations. Now the next thing I do is have a look at the cash stuffing categories. So you remember I've got $500 here, right? And I need to have a look and see what are the things that I have to stuff and what are the nice to have things. And then I've kind of got my bare bones budget. I know exactly what needs to take place every week and what doesn't. You know, some things are just nice to have, right? Not saying I don't like having them, but they are just sometimes nice to have. So if I look here, I've got me, that's, that's kind of my pocket money, this is kids' pocket money, oops, you, that's my husband, that's his pocket money, and then last is food. So food I know I need 130, that's non-negotiable. Under the road trip banner, I know in here that we have to pay for work transport for my husband in the form of a shuttle, and I know I need to put $60 each week into that. Miscellaneous, there's nothing there I have to do. In the kids, I have to put away $90 a week for their schooling for 2025. That's how much their fees will be. So that's 90, so I'm gonna put in here school fees. There's nothing I have to put in house, because remember I already have taken care of that in an online account if I need it. Bikes and tech. So fun, there's nothing I have to put in there. Animals. I guess there's a little bit of leeway here, but really you have to put money aside for your animals if you have them, because I have to make sure I could take them to the vet if I needed, and I wouldn't really want to be using an emergency fund. Medical dental, that's pretty costly at the moment, but we could get away with just $20 a week. That would fund the bare basics. Giving, that's a non-negotiable for us and it's only $5. Gifts. That could, we could take it or leave it, and these are challenges. So let's have a look here and see what this comes to. So a total of 325. So if I take my 500 that I have to stuff, minus 325, that leaves me with $175 to allocate how I see fit based on the particular week and the particular needs of our family. So that feels really good. I am all sorted now for 2024. I am ready to help my family propel ourselves into an early retirement. One of the keys to our budgeting success, though, is budgeting every dollar. So if you've ever been a Dave Ramsey follower or a fan, you'll know he talks about um, making every dollar work for you. And that's exactly what we do. We know how much we're going to get because we're giving ourselves $1,000 per week. Anything else we earn above this $1,000 is going straight into investments so that we can retire early. So we need to make sure we spend every dollar of this 1,000 
and tell it where to go so it's working for us and we're not left scrambling at the end of the week or the end of the month wondering where on earth did our money go? Why don't we have money for X, Y, or Z? Because when we tell this money, this $1,000 where to go, we know we're always going to have enough in our insurance account to pay that bill. We know we're always going to have enough in the bank to pay the power and internet, gas, wood. We're never going to go cold because the, the money's there to pay for the product that we need. And that is what can set you free, my friends. Because when you have this knowledge and you have this sorted out, your whole year is going to flow with ease. So I'd really encourage you, if you haven't sat down and done a zero dollar budget or a zero bank budget, which means you're taking the amount you have, whatever that might be, it might be more, it might be less, you take that amount and you're going to spend and allocate every cent into your various categories and tell that money what you want it to do for you in 2024. So that's it. Easy peasy, right? If something didn't make sense about what I've done here, please let me know in the comments below. Ask a question. I'm happy to help. 2024 is all about us taking back control in our own families and our own lives so that we can get where we want to go. And I hope you guys are having a cracking start to 2024 and I look forward to catching up with you soon for my next cash stuff. Bye for now.